Today we're going to look at a very powerful conditional access policy that you need to be very careful when you use, and that is the block conditional access policy. So the block policy is all about preventing users from accessing applications and resources that they should not access. Now, why do you need to be very careful with this? If you don't set it up correctly, you could potentially block yourself out of your own tenant and you won't be able to sign back in and you'll have to go through a painful process of reaching out to Microsoft and working through their support to get back into your tenant as a global admin. Right. So let's see where you can apply this and what the user experience will be as you set it up. Right. Now, a typical use case is you have uh, guest users come into your tenant. So you invite an external user. Say you want to collaborate with them on SharePoint and you want to work on a document or some project where you're collaborating with them. Now, what you might not realize is that these users by default also get access to all of the apps in your tenant, which includes privileged apps like Azure. Now, you might not want to do that. It's not a really big issue for um, the default behavior because Azure by default gives only very little metadata access to guest users. So there isn't much that they can do, but someone could accidentally give access to a subscription or a resource group or something important within Azure to a guest user without realizing it. So that is why as a policy, you might say, I don't want to allow guests to be given access to the Azure tenant by default, right? So you can set up a conditional access policy that will block these users from signing into the tenant. So that's where the block policy comes in and you can apply that to prevent access. Okay, so let's look at an example. Let's see what happens when you sign in without a conditional access policy and how the experience changes for the guest user after you apply the block conditional access policy. As Meryl, I have sent out an invite to Alex and invited him over into my tenant to Meryl Org, and I've given him access to a SharePoint site where we can collaborate. So if he clicks through, he will be able to sign into my tenant, into the SharePoint site in my tenant, and he can see the documents, he can access that site within, uh, within SharePoint and so on. So all that's good. So let's see what happens when he tries to access Azure using the browser. So now he's in the Azure portal and by default it's in his tenant. So he's, um, he's all good there at the moment. But what he can do is he can click on switch directory and he can switch over into my tenant. So even though he's the guest, he can click on switch and he can switch over into my tenant and be able to see um, things in my tenant, right? So uh, let's say he goes into enter ID in my tenant. He can see some metadata, but if he tries to access anything, say for example, the user's blade and so on, he wouldn't uh, see much information. In fact, it will tell him that he doesn't have privileges to see. So for the most part, you're safe. Um, by default, there's not much a guest user can do, but it's the accidental adding into a subscription that we want to avoid. Okay, so let's see what happens when he tries to connect uh, from the command line and tries to connect into my tenant as the guest, right? So he's given tenant, uh, he's tr trying to connect to Merrill.org. And so he's now has to, and he has to use the browser to sign in. So he completes the sign in from there. And so he signed in. So you can see how he connected to my tenant, even though he's a guest from a different tenant, he was able to connect into my tenant. So he can do things like uh, get Azure AD organization, and he can see some metadata about my tenant, uh, not much else, right? So now let's see what happens as an admin if you go in and configure your conditional access policy. I'm now logged in as a global admin on my tenant, 
and I'm going to create a conditional access policy that's going to protect my tenant from guest users accessing Azure. So let's go into conditional access. Right now, I have one policy defined. I asked for MFA from all users. Let's create this new policy that will be applied to all the external users, and I'm going to block access to Azure. So we are going to target this at guests, and I'm going to target it at all types of guests. Right, so I'm going to pick all of them. So any different type of guest categories as they come in, I'm going to block access for them. Now what I'm going to do is a good practice is to always exclude your emergency access account. Right, so I'm going to say, I'll pick my emergency account that I have. It's a global admin that I use for emergency access in, and I always exclude this. Now you have to be very careful with block policies. Um, always have the emergency account, even though right now we're only targeting guests, you're not targeting all users, but to be on the safe side, you should always exclude a guest account. Say someone accidentally targets it for all users, you could eventually get locked out. Right. Next, what I'm going to do is uh, going to target the Azure application. So you're going to select, now this is all documented. What you would do is you search for Windows Azure and you can select that to target Windows Azure, right? And the key policy, part of the policy is the grant. And what we're going to do here, unlike last time where we gave a grant access to MFA, we are going to make this a block policy, right? So I apply that, I select that. Now, usually you should uh, do it, save it in report only mode, make sure you are not blocking out um, users. When you're doing this new, you should always do it in report only and go and look in the sign in logs to make sure you're not impacting existing users. And once you're comfortable with it, you would then set it to on and you would publish that policy. Perfect. So now I've created the policy that will block users who are external users from signing into the tenant. Now let's see what the user experience will be once this policy is applied. So let's see what the experience will be from the command line. So I'm going to say connect AZ account. I'm going to sign into Merrill.org and I need to do the device login. So let me open up Safari. I'll put in the code. Right, and now you can see the conditional access policy has kicked in and it's a hard block. So it says, you don't have access to this, your sign-in was successful, but you don't have permissions to access this resource. So that's a very clear message to the user saying, you cannot sign into the Azure tenant for this user, and it gives you the details about log information and so on. So he's in his own tenant now. Let's see what happens when he tries to switch back into my tenant. And you can see conditional access immediately kicks in and prevents this user from signing in. Perfect, so that's the block conditional access policy. And we saw how you can define block policies to protect your tenant. Now with conditional access policies, there are multiple ways to achieve the same outcome. You can define grant policies with exclusions, or you can also define block policies. And each has its pros and cons. And in the next few videos, we'll look at the different approaches and the different user experiences when you define them. So remember to hit subscribe and stay tuned as we go further. Cheers.